to thank everyone who's uh, come from all over to this uh, meeting that was very quickly set up with 10 days and uh, people are still arriving at this. Once again, astounding uh, the effort uh, everybody makes for these, these events. So uh, we've got a lot of um, speakers today and I think everybody will enjoy themselves. This is the first of our, our meetings this year since our um, second festival on the 23rd of January, but unfortunately the bailiffs didn't come along uh, and join in with us. Or they did, and then they cleared off. So uh, I'm going to pass you over to Mickey Summers. He's got an awful lot of very, very important and good information to give to everybody. That's it, full up. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, I'm here to tell you all about what's going on in Nottingham with the child abuse situation. Um, we do have a good piece of news today. Operation Daybreak and arrested another perpetrator. And uh, we don't know yet whether he's been charged, but we definitely know that he's been bailed. You know, and uh, that's all come down from the pressure that's been put on by the Nottingham CSA Action Group. We formed the Action Group because the council want to have what they call an internal review at the end of uh, Operation Daybreak. An internal review, all that does is looks at current safeguarding and the rest gets swept under the table. That's happened for six decades. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I left my New York home a year ago today. You know, and I came back to find some pieces of my own personal jigsaw. Um, the only way I could find that was by finding records that they have destroyed. But they told me that there were records that they searched for in the Nottinghamshire archives by the navigation public in Nottingham. We found the documents. Some of them have placed me in places that they say don't exist. They, I even found documentary proof of their former director of social services who they claim, still claim does not exist. His name's Alan Smith. And he's been brought in by the Nottingham police. They told me he'd been arrested, but he was only invited in for a cosy little chat. The reason why he was only invited in for a cosy little chat is because here in Nottingham, we have what's called a strategic partnership. That's a partnership between the County Council, the City Council, and the Nottinghamshire Police. They're all guilty of past failures. I went to the police in 2003. The statements from uh, me going to the police in 2003 have all disappeared. Just like my childcare records, all disappeared. But I came to my own personal closure, and in doing that, I uncovered what's on show today. A mass cover-up that goes back over six decades. Last year, I could have took the money and run uh, as far as the compensation payout is concerned. And I could have gone back to New York and said bye-bye to it. But I'm a man of substance, and like, I'm not going to back down. I tried to blow the whistle on it in 1967 as a kid in care. It didn't work. I spent many, many years thereafter as a derelict drug addict uh, for many, many years. But I turned that around 12 years ago and put all the pieces together. And that's the thing that's got us to where we are today. We exposed the cover-up on uh, September the 8th last year after many, many protests. And we shut the council down. But the only people that left that meeting was the current Labour Party and I don't really do politics but after we've hit brick wall after brick wall I did recently try to enter into politics and it kind of backfired on me because I'm not that politically minded and having been out of the country for five and a half years I chose what was probably the wrong party to go with and the start of the smear campaign uh, the city council because they, they don't want me running against them and we knew the smear campaign was going to be about my criminal record uh, being a football hooligan being a drug addict even a former wife beater you know, but I take ownership of all that stuff today because you know, all this is consequences of my personal past but we actually got a whistleblower telling us a week before that I exposed myself on, on social media. Like, I don't have a problem with owning my, owning my past, it's the council and the police. But 
it went a little bit deeper than that, that they decided because uh, St Anne's is a multi-ethnic area in Nottingham, they would extend the smear campaign to say that they, they actually belong to the BMP, um, the uh, EDL and some anti-Muslim group. I've never in my life been attached to any such groups at all. I, I like to stand there and look you all in the eye and tell you. Anyone who wants to do any research on me, feel free. You know, because at the end of the day, I've got nothing to hide. But, but we've come a very, very long way since then. We've got, through our own publicity, we now have people coming to us rather than go to the police, rather than go to the council. We've got former social workers, current social workers, current police officers, past field police officers, all coming to us and blowing the whistle. You know, you might think that Westminster's uh, sort of something that's big, but it's only big because it's on the national scale and, and it's it's going to explode here in Nottingham. Um, I can't give too much information out, but uh, there's several media sources that we trust that are going to blow the lid on Nottingham. And, and when it does, I expect Nottingham to fold just like Rotherham did. We're going to get what we want eventually. Uh, what, what we decided was if we can't get out of them one way, we'll try another way. And that's what we kept doing all along. It's not going to work to try and uh, get them politically because my initial thoughts were if we can't attack them from outside, we'll try and attack them from inside and it backfired. But we've got a new way of uh, working our way forward and that is just to push on to what we want. A survivors led public inquiry with the broadest terms of reference that we can have. And those terms of reference are really actually based on the Westminster terms of reference for the National CSA inquiry. We've got a brilliant team that's uh, heading it. Um, some of them you know, some of them you may not know. But at the end of the day, people like John Collins, the elected leader of the City Council, Ian Curry, the Chief Executive of the City Council, we have inside information that they're actually shitting themselves. Uh, they don't know what's coming next. I, I love it going in and uh, doing some of the things I do. You know, for me, it's business. And I do my level best on a daily basis to take all of my emotional attachment out of it. You know, for the, since around September, October that last year, I've had many post-traumatic stress disorder meltdowns because of the emotive stuff that comes back and hits me. I even have to go and see a therapist quite often, like most Fridays. And I, I do that out of my own personal choice because I know what the consequences are going to be. I, I can go back to drugs or I can revert to what they want me to do, a, a violent reaction. You know, I would love to go in there and tear off a few eggs. But that's what they want. They want to discredit me at all costs. And I don't care. I will keep going. I, I'm like the Duracell bunny. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna back down at all. And we've gotta do what we've gotta do. And this is not just about Mickey Summers. You know, Mickey Summers is just the cannonball. Like right? the story of uh, where I came from, where my life ended up. It's you, the people, that have stood behind this campaign that's got it to where it is today. And without you, without, without people like Mark Salon and countless others that have got it well and truly in, in the public spotlight, I wouldn't be standing here today. You know? I'd have just had a few little news clips in the Nottingham Post and that would have been it. But the people that's rallied around us, they've rallied around the same way as people have rallied, rallied around Tom Crawford. And from the bottom of my heart, I have to say a massive thank you because I know that soon we are going to get what we need. We've got the Crime Commissioner, Paddy Tipping. You know, uh, we've got a dossier on him uh, that you wouldn't believe. Um, he, might, he might put this big public face out that there's no past police failures. Well, I can call him a liar on that face to face because the, the IPCC are actually investigating their past failure on my case from 2003 because all the statements were missing. 
he was the one that got the authorization for it to go to the IPCC. And so, next time I see Mr. Tipping, I need to know from him, why are you telling lies? Why are you in collusion with John Collins and Alan Rhodes of the County Council and Chris Eyre? They're all in it together at the end of the day and until we smash this strategic partnership, we're just going to bang our heads against the wall. But eventually, banging our heads against the wall, we'll loosen a few bricks and we'll loosen the foundations and we will get to where we need to go. I'm kind of uh, done with what i got to say, uh, because uh, many people out there do know my story. And any of those that you don't, that don't, I'll be hovering around afterwards and if you want to play catch up, feel free to play catch up. We do have another, a uh, couple more uh, protest rallies coming up quite soon, so uh, if you watch my Facebook page, we'll give you some info on there. The other post I want to talk about is Melanie Shaw. You know, um, Many of you know about Melanie, uh, she was also in jail last year, she didn't get a fair trial and at the end of the day that judge Michael Perk, he was on record of telling the jury that Operation Daybreak, the police investigation into this very stuff, is a conspiracy theory. Well, has anyone here ever heard of a conspiracy theory arresting people and charging them and take him through the court system. You know, that man needs to be brought to book alone, you know, for what he said. But as far as Melanie goes, I kind of followed what was going on with her uh, after she got her court case out of the way. And we had councillors promising her to put her on some kind of committee overseeing social services. They promised to give her a child back, but there was a precondition to that that she had to guarantee that she was going to be silent, that she was going to stop attacking the council, stop attacking the police, and she didn't. I was offered the same deal with uh, the county council by Steve Edwards. I told him to stick it to his ass. I don't, I don't want none of their deals, because all their deals are is for my silence. Well, I have a little saying, silence is not justice. and. I stand here today, not speaking for me, not speaking for some of those other victims that have already come out, but for the little people, those that have yet to be heard. And believe me, there's hundreds still out there. I'd like to have a good attack on Chris Eyre, the Chief Constable of Nottingham, because he was uh, in a meeting uh, last year with uh, John Collins, Superintendent Ellen Chamberlain, who's uh, in charge of public safety, and at the time, Operation Daybreak incorporated another uh, investigation about a place called Skegby Hall. Because Skegby Hall has got over 140 survivors involved in it, they made a strategic decision. That means the decision was made between the two councils and the police that they're going to uh, separate it. Operation Daybreak is now about the children's homes and it's a separate investigation. Why? Because they're all in it together. And I think I'm going to kind of wrap it up on that. Uh, we've got a few more minutes left and uh, we've got a good friend of uh, mine that's been involved with us, Nigel, and I'm going to kind of hand over to Nigel and let Nigel finish off. Uh, maybe he can give you some more information about what we're actually doing. That's what you call being dropped in, it takes me a <laughs> Hi everybody. Um, there is a couple of things I'd like to say that, that maybe we can glance over but be giving you a bit of information about. Melanie Shaw thing, we have a protest on Easter Sunday at midday in Peterborough. I'll be speaking at the protest proudly. It's very important that we support whistleblowers at this time. The Official Secrets Act was, um, <coughs> was tr we tried to get an amendment through on the Official Secrets Act just a couple of months ago to allow whistleblowers to be able to give information to the inquiry without the Official Secrets Act being used against them. Uh, and, and it was voted down in Parliament just a month ago. So whistle, the, if, they don't, if they don't want to give protection to whistleblowers, there's an obvious reason for that. It's because they want to persecute whistleblowers. Uh, so it's very important that we do try and get some support out there for Manly Shore. Uh, apart from that, on the 
11th of uh, April is the national um, CSA uh, inquiry protests throughout the whole of the country. There will be uh, protests held in Liverpool, Manchester, Holyrood and in London. So if you can't get to uh, the one down in London, you can always get to one of the others, I hope. Okay. don't know there's been much more information I can give you right now. Carl, I, I wasn't prepared for this, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thanks very much. Unfortunately, uh, Dave Witcher was going to be here, but um, he, he can't make it, so um, he sends his apologies. If we've got time, we can do a Skype with him, but unfortunately we can't get, uh, get it set up on this, uh, on this system. Mark Salon's going to have a word with you, first of all, for, uh, yeah, for five minutes. Right, well, since it's not that loud, this microphone, I'll just talk normally, because that's what I'm best at. <laughs> Some information that we've come across recently, uh, it's not my information, great researchers have been looking and digging and finding this out, this is to do with council tax. We've found out why they're sending us, well, sending people to prison via council tax. Um, one of the reasons they're using, amongst others, is when you go to court, if you fill out the form beforehand, that the, the council staff lovingly fill out for you, it's actually a uh, liability order, you're actually giving them the details for your own liability order, then they're saying you didn't turn up in court, so they're sending you to prison for contempt of court. Way round that, and the chap that, was, that found this out, he's actually stood over, sat over there, if he wants to make himself known, I'm sure he will do. One of the ways around that is um, go to court, attend court, and then ask to have it moved to the county court. Their court is a private court, moved to a county court, a court of record, you're laughing. Now, I'm sure if you can't figure out why, the next part, I will do. Uh, they will try, and I've no doubt they will come up with some excuses as to why they won't let you go, but it, you've got to push it and go for it. If they don't let you go, that's great. Here's what you do next. You call your first witness. Anybody know who your first witness is the going to be? The prosecutor! <laughs> yes, these already knew. Yeah, you call the prosecutor to the stand. He's then got to go on the stand, under oath, tell the truth. And you can have a list of questions you want to ask him, but I'm fairly sure that he won't go on the stand, because if he does, and he lies and commits perjury, he goes to jail. So what is most likely going to happen, he's going to refuse to get on the stand. At that point, you direct the, the uh, magistrates to discharge the case because there's nothing to answer because their key witness refusing to testify. And um, um, no, that's just a quick, but that's all I'm here for. And I hope everything's sorted down here by head. But thanks for that. A big hand for uh, for Kevin. My name's Kevin, uh, known as Kevin Mark in, in Facebook and uh, other things. And really I'm here today because I've had some breaking news that we found out probably about four days ago where I am with the gas, you probably see me do a video with Mark and there was another video placed last week where I was in Crewe in Cheshire at South Magistrates Court for a warrant. So I want to go through the gas where I am at the moment. The bank gyro credit slips, which I'll talk about, it. this is very important that you must need to know this even if you're in the part of a bailiff response, how you pay with the bills of exchange. So I'll go very, very briefly into the bills of exchange and I'll show you some examples. Um, Can you hear me in the back? Thank you. I'll go through uh, some examples of how I've paid it. There's three cases going on at the moment. I can't delve into one of the cases because it's that close, it's going into county court. Okay, so I can't mention any names, what court or what provider, what power supply, it's going to be the um, one of the power companies. Uh, but basically where I've been, very quickly, um, I had a, an Eon electricity bill two years ago and they took quite a lot of money out of my account without giving me formal notice and they broke the mandate agreement. So all the knowledge that I've gained, and I've done a lot of research, I've actually clawed that back, um, which was quite a lot of money. And how the clawback works, they have two weeks to come to me, that's where anybody can do this, they have two weeks to come to me, if you did it they would come to you, 
After that two weeks, they then go to the bank. And the bank told me, ignore all mail, all correspondence. Well, after the month elapsed, they heard nothing from Eon either. Sorry, Here? Yeah. 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 So they heard nothing from Eon either. So that money is now sitting in my account. So I was at crew last week, came back on a high, and then I was on a low when I got home because now I had a nice letter from Eon that says I'm to pay that money. So I paid with the bills of exchange. And I've also done that with the water. I've just done that with the water. And the thing is at the moment, the group that I'm with, it's a small group, there's only about five of us, and we do conference calls on Sky. And we're trying to test and, and poke and see where we can get, what door we can get in. At the moment, obviously, the goal is to get them into county court. Because if they get into county court, they're finished. So, I've set my bills of exchange off and I'll show you how to do it. It's very important as well when you do it, you don't pay any gas bill, utility bill on a promissory note. I'll explain that, that comes under the Consumer Credit Act and I'll, I'll show you through that. So where we are at the moment, we went into court last week and uh, the warrant was withdrawn as soon as we walked in the court. I think they knew that we was going, there was about five of us there. I've got two witnesses over there that came, they came from Stoke, which was nice for support. And um, we asked why the warrant was withdrawn, and he just said he probably paid for it. Well, the guy that we was representing had paid for it through the bills of exchange. So, previous to that, he got a letter, and this was British Gas, you know, looking after your world. And um, they said they don't accept promissory notes and they don't accept bills of exchange. You are gleaming information off the internet and using debt avoidance techniques. So we replied back and saying, obviously, you haven't got a concept in the bills of exchange because if you're saying you don't accept that, how are you, because you're doing bills of exchange every day, how are we supposed to pay with sterling cash? Because that's how commerce works. So, and to put you on record as well, a promissory note is a form of a bill of exchange through Lord Denning, you treat it as cash. However, we are not paying through a promissory note, we're paying through the bills of exchange and dismissing it, dismissing it straight away through transferred by endorsement. So I'll show you about that as well. So there's three cases going on at the moment and our goal is to get it into county court. And you probably think why, but that's the jurisdiction we need to be in. And it's all down to the warrants. When, when they get a warrant, it goes under the 1954 Gas Act, and um, that is basically saying that your gas supply is not safe, so they're applying for a warrant of entry. Um, but their real intention is, is to fit a prepaid meter. So I, I did one case down to the south, and I got the warrant throughout, and it was a sergeant, and I actually spoke over the phone and uh, the sergeant withdrew, however he was still going to put the door in with a ram and I just put him on notice that if he did he would be committing criminal damage and aggravated trespass. He withdrew and uh, on the Monday two more warrants came which we didn't know about um, and they stopped at that but you've probably seen the video when we had the High Court injunction at Queen's Bench that, that went quite well, fortunately the um, injunction was dropped so that was a bit of a shame that was, but that was an ideal situation that we needed to be. So they need a gas warrant for 1954 and then they come in and that's what they're saying, the gas supply is not safe. So if you show the gas safe certificate, that knocks the 1954 gas act out the window straight away. Because now you've shown proof that your gas supply is safe, which is what we did last week. We showed the gas agent, but he, wouldn't, he didn't want to see it, we produced it. He said he's not interested, he's not bothered, so we served him a notice. Basically saying that if he, if he carries on doing this and applying for warrants, now in the foreseeable future, that's him or any other gas agent, he's now committing fraud under the penalty of perjury. Well, they've applied for another warrant. Um, I'm back at court again next Friday in Crewe, South Cheshire, and this time we're going into court because it's now harassment on the penalty of Ras uh, protection from the Raskin Act 1997. So basically a bill of exchange is wherever you, how it works is it's quite an in-depth document 
the rule is if you take something away from the man, the man always has to be compensated. So if you go down the shop and you buy some products, you're taking products from that man, you have to compensate him so you pay him with, with money. And that's how it works. You do it day in, day out. When you go to a restaurant, you don't ask for the invoice, you ask for the bill. And that, that's in the bill of exchange. So if you get that concept right, you've just got to grasp that it's already paid for. The gas, water and electricity is already paid for. Because we are the creditors. And it's the corporate banks that give us that credit, but I'll explain that as we go. If you've got any questions, just fire away. Yeah. Yeah, on a, on a Virgin account, Big T, Sky, you can't, you cannot do it. Okay. And this is very important now. You, you've seen the gyro slips, haven't you? On the, bo on the bottom of bills, you've got the bank gyro credit, and that can only, that's between that's dealt, that's sent from a company to somebody to pay. And the only way you can pay that is with cash or check. Okay. And I'll show you the example as it comes up. Um, so that's done. That would be done in the situation of like your BT account, Virgin, and stuff like that. So the, when you go on to the joint, joint gyro, this is the important one, joint gyro credit slip. That is a negotiable instrument that is, that is issued from the corporate banks to us for your energy. And I'll show you that. Right. The top one is a bank gyro credit slip. I'll come to the left. The person who it's for, who is issuing it, is Capital One. Okay, that's addressed to whoever your address is. And the company where the bank will be going to is HSBC. That's whoever that company is using on that particular bank. Then you fill in what you need to fill in on value. And you pay it over the post office with cash or cheque. The bottom one is what is applicable to us. That is a joint gyro credit slip. On the left is the actual corporate bank. On this one, it's Santander. It could be um, whoever, Royal Bank of Scotland, whoever it is. It's that is the corporate bank. When we when we say we not um, electricity and gas is paid for, when they issue that, it's. It's the corporate bank that issue it, not E.O.M., Empower, British Gas or whoever. It's the corporate bank that issue us this joint gyro credit slip. That is a negotiable instrument. Never pay that on a promissory note, never pay that on acceptance of value. That's a must. Get thrown out. It's a case that I was brought to tonight. You pay with acceptance of value. It's on a no win. So, so how it works, and you also have trans cash, which is transfer cash. So the corporate bank issue that joint gyro credit slip to me. I then go to the post office, if I was to pay it, I will go to the post office, hand over my money to the, to the clerk or whoever the, behind the post office and pay it with cash. He would scan this. That barcode there is your account. So when that's scanned, that zero is back your credit. Okay? But at the same time, you're paying them with cash, so they're getting paid as well. And on the bottom right, which is not on here, you probably can't see, uh, I think that's Barclays, but it says Clearing Bank Facility. Keyword, Clearing Bank Facility. So this, this will then go to there, and it's cleared en masse. Think like mortgages when they securitise it. This is what they do here. Then this company, this bank, then pay E.O.N., whoever it is. So that's a joint gyro uh, credit slip. Big difference. And people probably think, oh, well, accepted for value, promissory notes, or bill of exchange. You cannot do it on this. Okay. Is everybody okay on that? I mean, with, uh, so how do you go about putting that in credit? Because I remember we've done one to Eastwood and it hasn't panned out at work. So how... For a bill of exchange? Yes. Yeah, so I'll how, show you now. Oh, okay. yeah. 
So if, if you don't know and you just go to the post office and pay it, that's how it would work. But if you clued up a bit and you can do it for bills of exchange, I'll show you an example. Oh, I'll just go back on this, on the Consumer Credit Act as well. Part of what we do with the bills of exchange, we use the joint, we use the Consumer Credit Act 1974, section 123. The key one for us is paragraph 5. But that explains in that section, and I'll read it, why we can't use promissory notes and why we can't use accepted for value. We can only use a bill of exchange by transfer of endorsement. Okay? So at the top, there's one line here that blows it all out of the water. That's for everybody. But we have yet got to get into county court to prove it. But if it got before a, a, a district judge, it would award in our favour. Because when you read an act, and I read an act, we both would interpret that act differently. There's only one person that can interpret the act correctly, and that's the judge. Okay? But it's line five. This section does not apply where the regulated agreement is non-commercial. You're non-commercial. That applies to factories, businesses that create commerce, it's part of commerce, that's how it works. Anybody that's using the natural resources uh, to produce products for profit, they are now liable because they're using our resources given to us because we are the creditors. Okay? So it's for a non-commercial agreement. When you look at the act, you have to look what's not in there. Not what's there, what's not there is the giveaway. It basically says, a creditor or owner shall not negotiate an instrument other than a bank note or a cheque in discharge of any, any payable. And then you've got A, by the debtor or hire under regulated agreement, or we're not regulated, or B, by any person as uh, short in relation to the agreement. I don't know if you can read that as well. The creditor or owner shall not negotiate a cheque take a buy-in in discharge of a sum payable as mentioned in subsection 1 except to a banker so banks this is why I say you cannot use a promissory note because it's only the companies that can produce a promissory note to a bank and that's purely for the fact that when they do their accounts for their business and if they're running behind they will issue a promissory note to the bank that they have a promise to pay it's a given time and a given day that's why it's applicable to that but when you come down to section 4, a person, that's this, takes a negotiable instrument, a credit slip, I'll show you, as security for the discharge of a sum, in the sum as it is intended to be paid, which is a negotiable instrument on the bills of exchange. In some other way, a negotiable instrument is to be presented, which I'll show you, for payment only for the sum that's paid in that way. Do you understand that? Okay. And then it's number five, it's not for a non-commercial agreement, it doesn't apply, so it doesn't apply to us. Okay. I'll put the details out, because that's my actual water one, so seven trend I did the other day. <laughs> um, so I took out my personal de details, but that is a negotiable instrument paid through the bills of exchange. The way that's done is, you do not touch the gyro credit slip. And if you look to the gyro credit slip I showed you earlier on, if you look at this one that's my 7 Trent Water one, it's exactly the same. Santander is the corporate bank, Transcash, that's, how, that's my account that I've deleted those numbers, obviously for personal reasons. That's the barcode, which is my account, which is my credit, so when the post office swipes it with a scanner, because they don't know anything, that now zeroes back my account. That's how much they're telling me how much I'm to pay. So you would go and pay it. I haven't. I've paid for the bill of exchange. And what I've done, and it's important to know this, I've done three stamps, first class stamps. I've signed and dated each stamp. When you produce this, you also write a covering letter because it, you have to include other documents that back what you've done. This is done with the Stamp Act 1891 which makes me a postmaster. So now I own that document. Nobody else owns that document but me. Neither does the judge or anybody. I own that document. So then I write across it, do not touch the bill, 
I wrote to cross it, not transferable, so it said you got to go to them. In other words, say if I did, did some work for Mark, um, and it's 50 quid, and then Mark said, hold on a minute, you owe me 50 quid, what's the best way I can resolve the situation? Give him his check back. And that's what we're doing here. Yeah, because I can't, I can't cash that. That's a gyro credit slip. I can't cash that. I can take that to the post office, but they want, they, they know what it is, but they can't cash it. I can take that to the bank, but they won't cash it. So that's credit to me. So what can I do? Well, have it back. So I give it them back, transferred by endorsement, which now zeroes back my domestic tariff to zero, and keeps their accounts and their books in order because I'm not commercial. So we use the three stamps, which makes me the postmaster. We also include within the documents um, the, the Stamp Act 1891, the Bills of Exchange, the Fraud Act 2006, because they, what they did about 25 years ago, they did what they call double dipping. So when you pay, they claimed on it again. So that's why the stamps go on it, which makes it my document. They can't alter that at all. Um, then I've included the protection from harassment tax because now what's happening with the warrants? They are harassing us now, really. So we use the protection from harassment act. Um, the gas act, the gas act, warrants of entry, section two and section three, the 1954 gas act. Um, and that's basically it. And that's that's how you endorse it. Is there any questions? Oh uh, yeah, sorry, I'll read that. Not transferable to Seven Trent Water for payment in the sum of, it's blurred for me to see this, £212, I think that's 50 pence. It's got my name, I've wrote my address out, and it's got my national insurance number on. Transfer this joint, keyword, joint gyro credit slip, never use bank gyro because they'll twist it. Transfer this joint gyro credit slip by my endorsement. For a non-commercial agreement, so I've, I've dated it and I've signed it, so now I own that now. So basically, they just have to zero back my tariff. Some of the time, they've got two choices: they can either walk away, or they can send it back to you, or they can keep it. Really, there's three. But if they send it back and they keep it, then they're in dishonour because the key words in the bill of exchange is honour and dishonour. I've been honourable. I've shown remedy. I've offered remedy twice now. Remedy for the joint gyro. Um, sorry, by the direct debit clawback. I was I offered remedy there, they, they just didn't engage. Now I've offered remedy with this, so I'm waiting to see what comes back. I had a letter uh, yesterday that they, they're taking me to court, so they say. So we'll see what happens on that one. But that's where I want. That's where we want to be. And we're trying to close every door that they want to get us into, and we want to keep that door open at the end, which is the door that takes us into county court. If it goes there, they're finished. And that's why they don't want it in there. Um, I, think that's, I think that's it on that one. Let's see what else there is. Yeah, that's just if you want to, if you've got notes and you want to jot that down, that's the documents that you enclose. I enclose the covering letter. Um, but that's the documents I referred to as reference how I've paid it and what each individual thing is. So it builds a picture. So why did I use a stamp? Under the Stamp Act 1891, which makes it me the postmaster and I own that document. And they're the documents that I've, I've submitted. Only on paper, I've not physically gathered the documents. That's their reference. If it ever goes to court, I will print the relevant pages off and that'll be part of my legal pad that I will go into court with. A nice good one is Lord Diplock, and that's from the book Archbold. Um, and it's contempt of court, and basically what Lord Dickrock said is everybody, everybody must have un unhindered access to commercial and criminal courts without prejudice. So I stick that one in there as well. So they're the documents that I use for that. Sorry? I, sorry, I can't read. Who did you send this to? What, the... Um, the documents. Uh, the, the bill of exchange. Just, yeah, the bill of exchange. I just send that back to Eon. No, when I write letters and when I correspond, I always put the CEO on notice. I never write to PO boxes. Always write to the address. And you can Google that and get the addresses very easily. Uh, and as you know, companies are 
a fictitious entity, so companies can't contract with a man, only a man can contract with a man. That's why you get no name or just get a squiggle at the end of the letter. But I Google it, look for the CEO, and I put that CEO on notice. Um, and that's that. Uh, probably on the last section, if there's no more questions, but an easy one. If you get, you know, you buy your debt collectors in the three letter rules, and they come back and they say, oh, you owe it, and they, they say things, and then we say, well, the debt's been discharged. Have you heard people say that? Because you bought it. Go down to the bills of exchange. I'll show you where that is, the bills of exchange as well. This is from excerpts of the Bills of Exchange, 1882. And the, the key one is section 59. The bill is discharged by payment in due course by or on behalf of the drawee or acceptor. That's another one. And the bottom one is where accommodation of a bill is paid in due course by a party accommodating the bill is discharged. So when you hear that saying, you've already paid for it, they're referring to the Bills of Exchange. And that one is, a third party could pay that amount off. In, even without your knowledge, the, bill, the, the bill's discharged. So that just gives you an understanding, but you've got to try and get the concept of a bill of exchange and it's a negotiable instrument. Um, I think that's about it, really.